We're starting off uh, with the Nigerian Football Federation. The leadership tussle uh, is back. Huh? We all thought um, that was in the past now. Uh, Cecilia, um, Amaji Pinnick um, um, had um, the, uh, been in charge uh, for the last uh, couple of years. The election Everything, is just around the corner. So. Everything seems to be going well. The Super Eagles uh, went to the World Cup, uh, got knocked out in the, second, in the first round. Uh, they're already thinking of the future, how to how to progress and how to advance uh, this thing. Then the NFE leadership tussle uh, resurfaces, and it's a big problem. It's a big problem for, uh, for football in the country. Absolutely. But, but you know, why, why most of us were actually shocked by that was the fact that we remember sometimes last month, or, yeah, when, when there was actually uh, a letter from Gil to FIFA and uh, it was stated that he's on the ban and all that, so he cannot, you know, I mean, he has been banned from all football-related activities. Well, okay, before we delve into that, this is coming from uh, the sports minister, Simon Dalong. That's how the whole thing started flying uh, yesterday, that long statement, when he says, they have been directed to notify you of the orders dated June 5th, 2018, made by Honorable Justice M M.H. Oh, yeah. sitting at the Federal High Court, Jules, in respect of the above-mentioned suit between Yahaya Adama v. Alaje Aminu Magari, which states that the election of the NFF held on August 26, 2014, the leadership of Ambassador Chris Gewa uh, be given recognition pending the hearing and determination of the motion on notice filed, filed in this case, and that the purported ban of the executive committee elected on August 26, 2014 from football activities of the NFF is unconstitutional, null, and void. It is the law that court orders are sacrosanct and any act of disobedience to it, to it constitute threats to the rule of law. Consequence upon the above, you are hereby advised to comply with the orders of court, okay, of the court, and uh, made therein, which for now is the valid and binding order of court in the absence of any other subsistent order or judgment to the contrary. Now, the summary, is, yeah, the summary of all this is that Chris Giwa has been, uh, uh, you know, told and directed uh, by the uh, Federal uh, Ministry of Youth and Sports uh, to take over uh, the leadership of the NFF. And you wonder, uh, where does that put uh, Amadou Pinnick, uh, who has been in charge uh, for the last uh, couple of years? And uh, his uh, attorneys have, you know, reacted uh, to that situation. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, through their lawyer, you know, the lawyer Festus. reacting to the Festus Kayamu, right. uh, saying that, you know, well, if we go through what it is, uh, what Festus Kayamu has to say is based on what FIFA is saying, because exactly. we understand Nigerian Football Federation is not an in, it's not independent of uh, FIFA. So mm. they, I mean, everything is from FIFA and the only court orders usually that they obey across the world has to be with the Court of Administration for Sports. That's mm. CAS. Now, this is what is coming from uh, Festus Kayamu. Yeah, it's a long one. statement. The long statement. To the summary, summary is that, okay, this is the summary. Type. Okay, so why our clients respect the sanctity of court orders? Unfortunately, the said court orders are not binding on FIFA. The, mm. That's the word football governing body. The NFF is an affiliate of FIFA. Mm. And went further to state that it should be noted that FIFA has consistently maintained that this same matter has been taken to the highest court of sports arbitration in Switzerland by these same individuals and they've lost. FIFA is only bound by the decision of the court of arbitration for sports and does not entertain or tolerate decisions by local courts in footballing nations worldwide. And went further to say that hence FIFA has since upheld the decision of the court of arbitration mm. on this matter and recognized the NFF board led by Amaji Pinnick. Nigeria has a duty to comply with that decision. And so that's what he went further to say. Okay, we have... Uh, uh, Festus, uh, on the line now, he's going to tell us more about this, what it is all about, what it means for the country, and also what we should be expecting from Nigerian Football Federation, led by Amaji Pini. Good morning and welcome to the program. Your news boss yesterday. You have been uh, scrolling on your school bar that um, the Supreme Court um, uh, made an order uh, that uh, Chris Dewar should take over the NSF. It is not true. The staff minister was not reacting to a Supreme Court judgment. The Supreme Court judgment never ordered Chris Dewar to take over the NSF. This is because Chris Dewar has never been a party to any case in court, and Abadou Pinnick has never been a party to any case in court. 
As I speak with you, Chris Giwa and Amadou Pinik are not parties to any case in any court, whether from the Federal High Court or the Supreme Court. So what happened was that when the Federal Attorney General um, looked at the judgment of the Supreme Court in April, he gave an opinion that there was nothing to enforce, and the Attorney General advised all parties to go back to the lower court to determine the case on the merits. It was after, after this directive by the Attorney General of the Federation that Chris Giwa went back to the lower court and in an ex parte motion, I want everyone to take note of this. There was no contest. There was no service of papers on anybody. There was no service of papers on Amaju Pinik or any of his lawyers. An ex parte motion, one-sided. Only, only, Chris, only Chris Giwa was heard. The court ordered that Chris Giwa, who was not a party to the, who is not a party to the case, to go back and take, uh, they should recognize the election that produced him, the Congress that produced him, and they should de recognize the Congress that produced Amadou Pinik. Meanwhile, the two of them are not parties to the case. Now, this is not a forum for me to argue my case and to impugn the integrity of the court. I do not intend, I repeat, I do not intend to impugn the integrity of the court. I'm only saying it the way it is. But having said all of this, in our statement yesterday, we made it very clear that as long, so long as, um, in as much as we respect the sanctity of the courts, uh, no matter the uh, misgivings we have about the judgment, the ruling, I did the order, like I just said, uh, in as much as we respect the sanctity of the courts, unfortunately, and I repeat, unfortunately in this situation, the order of the court does not bind FIFA. FIFA is uh, the world football governing body, and NFS is an affiliate of FIFA. Just two or three weeks ago, FIFA actually wrote back to Kiwa's lawyers. They warned, they, they warned and stressed it for the opt-in time that FIFA will not abide by any decision by the local court because Chris Kiwa had previously gone to the court of arbitration for sports and lost. Kiwa had lost in the court of arbitration for sport, and having lost in that court, he ran back to the Nigerian court. So, in the eyes of FIFA, Kiwa cannot, if not, and can never be the president of NSS. And as a consequence of what he had done, and by dragging everybody to the local court, FIFA had imposed a worldwide ban on, on Kiwa and his so-called court. A worldwide ban. There is, they cannot participate in any football activity anywhere on planet Earth for the next five years. So I want to ask you and I want to ask Nigerians, how can such a person in his dream say he wants to be president of NSS when you are on, under a worldwide ban? How? So the ambition of one person wants to bring down the entire football house on all of us, the ambition of one man, we bring down the entire football house on us. So let me tell you this very clearly and tell Nigerians that Giwa is on a journey to nowhere. He's on a journey to nowhere. It will end the way it has started. Okay, what's the role? Let me just ask you this final question before I let you go. What's the role of the sports uh, ministry here? Because according to the statement from him, he's saying that uh, the Amaju Pinik and others are directed to comply by the uh, Supreme uh, Court's uh, judgment? Unfortunately, the sports minister has not played a very good role in this matter. He has a duty to advise government. He has a duty to advise government that there is a judgment already by the Court of Arbitration for Sports, which the government is bound to comply with because we are a responsible nation in the Committee of Nations. So the sports minister has, has not played a very salutary role on this matter at all. All those statements he's bringing out about uh, complying or not complying is just a smoke screen. Okay, uh, thank you very much, sir, for throwing light on these very uh, issues. We definitely want to get more updates.